The Samsung Galaxy Tab A 8.0-2017 is the second tablet Samsung released this year. Unlike the Galaxy Tab S3, it is a lower middle class device. Its features include an 8 inch HD screen, a Snapdragon 425 processor and a metal back. The LTE version supports phone calls. As of now, it is available in Asia and the United States and should be released in Europe soon. Prices start at around 230 US dollars. How good is the new Samsung Galaxy Tab A 8.0? That's what you will find out in this review. Let's start this review with the design and build quality. The design does not resemble other recent tablets from Samsung. It looks quite different compared to the Galaxy Tab S3 or Galaxy Tab A7.0. You can get it in gold and silver. Unlike Samsung's previous tablets, we actually are getting a metal back here. While the build quality is good, it does not feel very high end. The frame is made out of plastic and the metal back can feel a bit slippery. As I said, the build quality itself is pretty good. But the smaller Galaxy Tab A7.0 is nicer to hold thanks to its rubber back. It's relatively light with a weight of 364 grams, but it is not the thinnest tablet at 8.9 mm. We've seen much thinner devices from Samsung in the past, but it's still alright. The front looks like a typical Samsung tablet. As usual, we get a physical home button underneath the display. Next to that are a back button and a recent button that are both capacitive. I didn't like the physical home button that much. It feels kind of old, especially if there's no fingerprint sensor included, and that is not the case here. Most direct competitors still feature a micro USB port, so it's nice that Samsung is giving us a USB Type C connector instead. All manufacturers should start to use these. On top, we're getting a 3.5mm audio jack. On the left side, you can open a card slot which can hold micro SD cards with a capacity of up to 256GB. With the 4G version, there's a SIM card slot as well. Next to the USB Type-C port is one single speaker. It's kind of a bad place for a speaker. While watching movies or just YouTube, I constantly covered it up with my hands by accident. The sound quality is not bad, but certainly not outstanding. It can't keep up with higher-end devices. While it can be quite loud, it's lacking a good bass. On the back, we're getting an 8 megapixel camera that is supported by an LED flash. You can record Full HD videos with this one as well, but no 4K videos. The front facing camera offers a resolution of 5 megapixels. Considering that this is a tablet, the quality of the cameras is not bad at all. Actually, it's pretty good. But as you might expect, the quality is not on the same level as with recent smartphone cameras. By the way, next to the front facing camera is another speaker that you can hold up to your ears. As I said, you can make phone calls with the LTE version and that's the one I got. As the name suggests, the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8.0 has an 8 inch screen. I really like this size because it's great for reading and very easy to carry around. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10 and the IPS panel offers an HD resolution of 1280 by 800. Nowadays an HD resolution is quite low. It's not too bad on an 8 inch screen, but almost every smartphone offers a much higher pixel density. Sadly, most direct competitors like the Lenovo Tab 4.8, Huawei MetaPad T3.8 and Amazon Fire H8 have an HD resolution only as well. It's kind of disappointing that the screen is not fully laminated. There's a small gap between the touchscreen and the IPS panel. A lot of cheaper tablets have this gap and by the way, that includes the 2017 iPad. But still, I expected more from Samsung. The cheaper Galaxy Tab A7.0 had a fully laminated screen. The gap is not as big as with some cheaper tablets, but because of this gap, it's easier to see reflections outside. As I said, most competitors have this, but since Samsung's tablets are usually a bit more expensive, like here, I didn't expect this. Besides that, all other aspects of the display are very good. The screen is very bright, offers a nice contrast and colors look nice. The viewing angles are good too. Let's take a closer look at the internal hardware. Inside the Galaxy Tab A 2017 runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 425 quad-core processor. All four cores are clocked at 1.4 GHz. In addition to that, we are getting 2 GB of RAM and a 16 GB to 32 GB internal storage. With the 16 GB version, you get around 9 GB to use by yourself. 
iPad Z Lenovo Tab 48, Huawei MediaPad T3 8 and MediaPad T3 10 was almost identical hardware already and as expected the performance of those tablets is pretty much identical. During everyday use I didn't notice any huge differences and the benchmarks are very similar too. The benchmark results are not surprising. In Geekbench 4 the Galaxy Tab A8.0 gets around 660 and 1820 points. With Antutu it gets a result of 36000 points. As you can see that is pretty similar to other Snapdragon 425 tablets. And what's also very interesting, the much cheaper Amazon Fire HD 8 gets very similar results. All apps I tried ran smoothly for the most part. That includes the Chrome browser, YouTube and Microsoft Word. But I've had also a lot of fun with Lightroom and the Kindle e-reader. If you switch between apps fast you might see some small stuttering especially if there are high-end games among them. But as I said, overall the performance is pretty good. The Galaxy Tab A 2017 is not a dedicated gaming tablet. Like with other Snapdragon 425 tablets, Modern Combat 5 is not really playable. Well, unless you're super patient. There's a lot of stuttering during action-heavy sequences. Other games like Asphalt Extreme, Asphalt 8 Airborne and Dead Trigger 2 run very nicely. The same goes for simpler games like Ramit Adventures. You can play some games at pretty high graphic settings and that can look very nice. But as I mentioned, some like Modern Combat 5 do not run great. The tablet supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, NFC, GPS and as I said, optional LTE. I didn't have any issues with the Wi-Fi or LTE reception and Bluetooth works great as well. On the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8.0 2017 runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat. So this is the first tablet from Samsung that is shipping with Android 7.1.1. The Galaxy Tab A9.7 from 2015 did get this update though. When it comes to software, Samsung might have a big advantage over its direct competitors. In the last couple of years they've been pretty good at releasing updates. Most manufacturers release just one update and a lot none at all. But Samsung did release several in the past, even for the cheaper tablets. The Galaxy Tab A9.7 got two major updates and the Galaxy Tab A10.1 from last year has been updated to Nougat as well. Will the Galaxy Tab A8.0 get Android 8.0 Oreo next year? I certainly cannot say that for sure. But based on the update history it is much more likely compared to almost all of its direct competitors. As usual Samsung did customize the interface quite heavily. On top of Nougat runs the Samsung Experience version 8.5. Compared to previous tablets the design changed a bit but most of the features are the same. Unlike previous generations there is no app drawer anymore. Instead you have to swipe up on the home screen to get an overview over all installed apps. When you swipe to the left you would have seen Flipboard in the past. That has been replaced with Samsung's own virtual assistant called Bixby. You've probably heard of Bixby before from the last smartphone releases. Bixby can help you with your calendar, give an overview over the weather and show what's trending. Overall I didn't find it very useful as of now. Besides Bixby there aren't many changes. You can still open the split screen view by holding the recents button. This way you can open two apps side by side. Samsung has supported this feature for a lot of years already but now it's part of Nougat. There's a lot of stuff in the settings so if you get this tablet it's worth to spend a couple of minutes and go through them one by one to see what you might want to adjust. There are also a lot of apps pre-installed. That includes Samsung's own apps like the File Manager and the Notes app. But as usual there are Google's apps pre-installed as well and the same goes for Microsoft's Office apps. You can deinstall them though. Inside the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8.0 sits a battery with a capacity of 5000 mAh. That lasted for a one time of just over 12 hours in my battery test. So the battery life is very good especially when you consider the price. For my battery test I'm always running an HD video in a loop at 50% brightness and activated Wi-Fi until the tablet shuts itself off. During my everyday use the battery life has been great as well. The tablet is almost not losing any charge while the screen is turned off. That's really good. According to my battery diary the tablet lasted 52 hours one time. Out of those I used it actively for 7 hours. In the time I surfed the web in Chrome, worked on Microsoft Word and watched some YouTube. The brightness varied between 150% and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi were turned on the whole time. So can I recommend the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8.0 2017? 
The build quality is very solid, the performance is good and the battery life is excellent. At the same time, we get good software and updates are likely in the future. On the other hand, it's kind of sad that the screen is not fully laminated and we get an HD resolution only. But as I said, the competition of us is the same and Samsung's screen is a bit brighter. Overall, the Galaxy Tab A 8.0 is a very solid tablet and I enjoy using it. But can I recommend it? That depends on the price and you have to compare those locally. In the US, prices started at $230 for the 32GB Wi-Fi version. The Lenovo Tab 48 and Huawei MediaPad T3 8 with almost identical hardware but with 16GB of storage cost just around $150. Now, Samsung's prices tend to drop quite fast over time. In fact, right now you can get it for just $199 already. So wherever you're from and whenever you're watching this, please compare the prices. It might be worth it to spend a bit more for possibly longer updates and the great battery life. But you shouldn't spend much more than for the Lenovo Tab 48 or Huawei MediaPad T3 8. As I said, those three tablets are very similar. Alright, that's my review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 8.0 2017. If you have any questions, just write them down below. I'm NJ for mynextablet.com. Thanks for watching.